Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back my dear friends and dear students. Uh, this is the DADM 2 lecture series under NPTEL MOOC and uh, as you know this total course duration is 30 hours which is for 12 weeks and each week we have uh, 5 lectures each being for half an hour. So, total duration would be as you know 30 and spread over the total duration. I am Raghunandan Sangupta from the IME department IIT Kanpur. Uh, now, coming back to the discussion, if you remember we were discussing the safety first principle and I did mention that how the normal distribution being true, how we can solve it very easily. So, we will continue discussing that and this is the 10th lecture which is the last lecture in the second week for DADM 2 and after that you will have the second assignment. So, even though for our example we have simplified our assumption by considering only normal distribution, this point which I mentioned time again. Eh? But this would hold true for any distribution having the first and second moments because the reason being first and second moments being you need to find out the expected value, you need to find out the standard deviation or the variance which is basically for A, B, C decisions R bar A, R bar B, R bar C would be the respective mean values for A, B, C decisions and similarly sigma suffix A, sigma suffix B and sigma suffix C would be the corresponding standard deviation for A, B, C decisions. I am using uh, sigma in place of standard error, but that is without much of concern because if you get the concept, you can solve it accordingly. Now, I did mention about the Chebyshev's inequality and Markov inequality very fleetingly, I do remember in the case of DADM1 and try to utilize that concept uh, for the DADM2 where you have the safety first principle. So, according to Chebyshev's inequality for any random variable x uh, such that first moment and second moment which is E of x and V of x exist, then obviously you will have this as true. Now, let us look at from the diagrammatic point of view so that if I am able to draw the diagram, uh, the, it will be easy for me to explain to you and also you will get that concept decently clear. So, I will first draw the normal distribution. I will use the axis as, as uh, black, so this is the normal. Now, I have the expected value which I will mark uh, as red, so the E of x, so it can be R, R p also R bar p, R bar p a or p b, what I am using the expected value and this is the variance. Now, this x has a distribution which is normally distributed and what I am considering is that a, a bandwidth depending on the variance. So, consider this one. So, this is the value. So, I am considering x minus E x divided by V x. So, I am basically normal, normalizing the difference between the random variable and the expected value divide by the variance. So, the high variance being very high obviously it will be normalized accordingly. So, I want to take this whole area and that is greater than some value of t, t is a, as a so called constant which, which I will take and the value of that would always be less than equal to 1 by t square uh, depending on the Chebyshev's inequality. So, what I do is that in this case I replace x by R p, E of x by R p bar and there was a variance also I did not write f of v of x would be replaced by sigma actually should be sigma of R p. So, and you consider a value of k, k would be the some threshold value. So, that probability would be for this mod of this of this normalized distance 
being gate greater than k would always be less than or equal to 1 by k square. So, higher or lower the k square will dictate that what is the so called normalized length based on which you can take this decision. So, if you basically have a, a, a two, uh, two or three different type of uh, distributions, these are not normal. I am using the word two or three different type of distribution based on the fact that the mean values and the, and the variances for the, uh, for the decisions are, are different. So, say for example, you have A, you have B, you have C. For all of them, you will basically have such distributions where the expected values and the variance are different based on that when you find out the Chevizian's inequality, you will have some value of k and being less than equal to 1 by k square would give you the bound uh, such that you can find out uh, that how we can rank the decisions based on the safety first principle. So, as we are interested in lower limit, that means we are in, in interested more on the negative values. If you remember, it was basically minimization of probability of R p is less than R l. So, simply we can write down. So, if it is uh, we remove the mod. So, we find out the value. So, in place of e of, um, um, R, um, in place of x it will be R p in place of e of x it will be R bar p and in place of variance of x it will be sigma of p or sigma for R, R p. So, this is greater than k such that is less than 1 by k square. Now, what I do is that again I now normalize them. So, normalizing this basically means okay. now coming back to the actual formula. So, here this actually this is coming from here and then I will write down what is what I am missing and then I jump here. So, if you remember we already have this formula. I should use a different color, it will be easy for, for us to differentiate and highlight it first. Those, so, this is the So, let me write down what is the actual thing which we were looking for. So, we already have seen in the previous uh, discussion. So, the equation which is written here where I am hovering my, my pointer is actually R p minus R p bar divided by sigma of R p this was greater or equal to. So, in this case it is greater. Now, you already had R l minus R p bar big divided by sigma of R p. So, now what we do is that we are replacing this with k sorry. So, this is k, I should remove it k. So, which means that the k value is known to you given the fact that the standard deviation and the values of R n and R p bar are known to you. So, R l technically would be and use the red color. So, actually this would be R f. So, you have the standard deviation of the de of the decision, the mean value of the decision and R f being the risk free interest rate which is coming from outside. So, immediately you can find out the bound k, k square and solve the problems accordingly. So, lower and higher would basically give you how you can rank them from the highest to the lowest or the lowest to the highest depending on what your main criteria is. So, the right hand side of the inequality is in exactly equal to the decision process 1 which we have taken 1 means minimization of the probability of R p less than R l under the safety first principle. So, we have considered initially. So, once you basically put this technically this is k, this is k square. So, actually the formula whole formula 
leads to the first safety first principle or bullet point which you have considered. So, technically the Chevy's inequality and the safety first principles are the same considering the normal distribution and similarly you can modify that, that, that rule of the safety first principle, the first bullet point with respect to the Chevy's accordingly. Provided if you remember I mentioned the first moment which is the expected value and the second moment which is the variance exist. For the second criteria if you remember, now I am basically trying to change the problem. I am not going to solve these problems from the optimization point of view. Remember that we will only come into this optimization concept later on in DADM 3 is basically to highlight that how they can be utilized. I do not want to burden all of you with, with trying to solve the optimization problem because this is a total different concept we will consider in DADM 3. For the second crit criteria we already had maximization of Rn, I should use and the color red, so it will be easy for us to read. So, you maximize R p R l and uh, what you do is that you bring uh, such then constraint. So, you are trying to push R l on to the right. If I am looking at the distribution from my side, R l is on to the left, you are pushing it on to the right, but subject to the case that the probability of R p less than R l is kept fixed at alpha. So, obviously, it will mean technically your actual optimization is now let us think it a little bit philosophically or let us try to understand it. When you are talking about R p which is basically where we already have the returns and we want to find out the weights for the alternatives. Now, if the weights change R p changes. So, when you basically look at this optimization problem, maximization with respect to uh, some constraint, maximizing R L is basically pushing on to the right, but provided also the probability of R L R P is less than R L is, is good less than alpha. So, obviously, if technically if the distribution let me draw it. No, this is so. Let me write it. This is R P bar. This is R P. This is R L. So what you are trying to do is that you are going to push R L, but subject to the cons fact that this whole area remains as alpha. So, if you are pushing R L obviously, it would also mean that if, if only R L moves then the area alpha will start increasing. So, in order to restrict that the whole distribution also starts moving on to the right on the to the right. So, the alpha value remains as it is if I consider the overall value to be alpha it can be less than alpha also. So, we are giving alpha given alpha say for example, 0 0.05 then we should basically have if you convert this this uh, whole set of of constraint considering the normal distribution so what you have is rp minus rp bar divided by sigma of rp which is the left hand side of the equality inside the bracket and on the right hand side it will rl minus rp bar divided by sigma of rp which is the the second term on to the right hand side of the inequality sign inside the bracket and this alpha value is given from depending on the reliability of the overall risk attitude the person has based on which he or she can basically invest. So, we have drawn it considering the distribution is true what is what is showing being shown here for a decision B. This is basically R p bar obviously, you will have the R R b as the distribution this is r b bar then you have a standard deviation. So, technically this z is being formulated based on the fact that you have converted that into a standard normal that means you have started with this I am repeating it many times plus please bear with me. So, 
So, this value of z is equal to this and the, the value for this which is basically the distribution of z we have, we have been able to basically draw the distribution of, of capital of z. So, technically this is this is the z capital z. So, this distribution has been it should be drawn. So, I basically drawn both of them and basically mark the values accordingly. So, technically this should be some R l which has been converted to small z, this is R b which has been converted into capital z the standard normal distribution. And again I am repeating this can be done for other distributions also. Now, coming back to the utility concept based on, on the mean variance concept for portfolios or any decisions, what I would not go into the details, but I will basically highlight it. So, if you see the mean variance diagram, so on, along the y axis you are measuring r bar p, it will change depending on the weights which you are investing in different alternatives. Along the x axis you are sigma p and what you are doing is that you have drawn this this um, uh, blue line which is the efficient frontier. So, our main task is basically to find out that p star value, p star is basically a so called optimum portfolio value where the weights which you are trying to invest in this different type of alternatives for the decision which is the portfolio is such that I am getting the maximum return based on the fact my risk is also increasing, but the proportional value of the increase of the risk is such that the ratio of the risk to return or a return to risk is the best for my case. So, risk to return would be I trying to take the minimum value for return to risk I will take the maximum value such that the weights are the best combinations. So, what you do is that this R L value which is R R P uh, R R sorry R F which is the risk free interest rate you will basically keep changing it. So, as you keep changing it, you will basically have a different contours based on which you can find out what is the best value of, of portfolio or the alternatives such that you get the R p star value or p star value. So, you keep moving the parallel lines which are R l 1, R l 2, this suffix 1, 2, 3, 4 are the different values. So, you keep changing them. So, say for example, if you consider R l the values which are there inside this whole set of values or the points which are there inside the graph are basically different combinations of, of um, uh, risk return profile for the decisions such that you have different type uh, the same alternatives, but you are investing in different proportions. Now, those are not the best because you have not been able to reach the best optimum value because obviously you will always try to go as high as possible for R p and, and as low as, as possible for uh, sigma p. So, keep changing R l. So, go to R l 1, R l 2, R l 3 and the point where it is basically tangent to the graph that p star value would give us the best combination such that my overall risk and return profile is, is needed uh, is met. Now, you may be thinking that why I have drawn this graph in this way, they could have been under tilted also. Let me draw it. Let me use the green color. So, say for example, R l or the graph was this depending on the on the risk return profile. So, I could have drawn parallel lines like this. So, it would the R p star would have been some value. So, the for the first case I will use the return and risk were this. So, I will consider as say for example, double star and another case is basically uh, I will remove this and come, come back to the same color combination. So, it is easier for me to draw. So, the first value is basically sigma p 1 star and this is sigma p double star, double star and one star are just to differentiate. Similarly, here you will have basically r p double star r value and this is r bar p single star. So, they, they would basically be 
two different sets of portfolio uh, or the, uh, the two different sets of decisions uh, based on the fact that uh, the alternatives are the same, but you are investing different amounts. You can change it accordingly depending on how the problem has been formulated. So, the criteria to maximize RP says that now you are again bringing a constraint which is based on the fact that you had the first uh, safety first principle is probability RP is less than RL is, is equal to alpha. The alpha value is fixed or predetermined determined or given by the investor. Here alpha is the predetermined depending on the investor's own constraint. Thus, with the con condition if you put it you will basically have the graph as this. Now, this is uh, a simple concept how do we do it? Let me basically go reverse step. So, basically it is R p bar minus R l divided by sigma p is less than equal greater than small z. So, this is the case. So, what we have considered is basically oh this should not be R bar. So, if you consider the value here, this is basically small z on the right hand side of the equation which is from here. So, you have been able to convert that actual value of R l minus R p bar divided by sigma p into a case where it is basically a, um, the small z, you put an equation for that, have a linear line and that is the linear line we have been talking about. So, you can basically convert it depending on how the problem has been formulated. Now, consider a different way of trying to solve the problem. Here I will consider the R f uh, uh, or the R l is fixed. So, I want to find out at what value of R p or p star I will get the best combinations. So, what I do is that I have the efficient frontier which is the blue line. Now, what I do is that I, I turn the, the straight line which is R l and A 1, A 1 is arbitrarily one point uh, taken in order to basically denote the straight line, I turn it counterclockwise, keep moving it. So, basically it cuts or, or basically touches the blue line at B 1 and A 1, then you turn it uh, counterclockwise, it, it touches or cuts it the blue line at B 2 A 2, continue doing it. So, at one point of time uh, A 1, uh, we are uh, so these A values and B values merge, which would basically be the tangent point and that is the P star value based on which you are going to take a decision that what is the optimum alternatives in the in the investment sense, which you should invest in order to get the best possible returns based on that you are trying to maximize the return or minimize the risk or some combinations of that. And again remember we are considering in a very simple sense the normal distribution. Now, consider we have projects A, B, C, D, I am considering four different decisions and we need to rank them. So, I am not interested for the time being to find out what are the investment which is happening per alternative for the um, uh, projects A, B, C, D or decisions A, B, C, D. They would be com coming out in a later stage. First, I want to rank them provided I have already made an investment. So, consider we have projects A, B, C, D and we need to rank them using the concept of safety first principle, the information are given. So, along the um, uh, first row you have basically the R p bar which is the return on the portfolio the decision for A, B, C, D are given as 7, 10, 12 and 15 and the corresponding second row is basically standard deviation happening for the returns for these decisions which is A, B, C, D the decisions and the standard deviations are respectively 10, 15, 15, 105. And you also remember this R l value or R f value which is fixed um, beforehand by the investor depending on what are the external etc. information which he or she has, the value is given as 7 percent and also consider the returns are normal distributed. So, what you need to find do is basically again convert them to a standard normal which I have been doing it time and again in the in this class by drawing the diagrams. Find out the probabilities based on the safety first principle, find out the probabilities on the left hand side less than R l, R l is given as 7 percent. So, you can find them and rank them accordingly such that your problem would be solved. Now, as per the safety first principle, so you are, your actual decision is minimize the probability of R p is less than R l, where you have basically 1, 2, 3, 4 um, till m is the number of projects 
and under each project you have the investment we made in, in jobs activities or financial decisions or alternatives which are given by j is equal to 1, 2, 3, 14 n. Thus, we have from the basic uh, concept of, of statistics this rule which we have already done repeatedly. So, this is capital Z, this is small z which is given that value is alpha can be found out from the standard normal table rank them from the lowest to the highest depending on whether you are looking at the left hand side or the right hand side. Now, why I am saying in the right hand side that depending on many different criteria if you are considering the negative distribution of the losses, negative distribution being the losses or if you consider the positive distribution which are the gains your overall rule remains the same, but with a sign change accordingly. So, it is a maximization problem becomes a minimization or vice versa and the probability is also rather than on the right hand side you will try to basically look on the uh, on uh, rather than the left hand side you will try to look at the right hand side. And you remember that the R p j for the each investments has a ha have a normal distribution with an average value given by R bar I am not mentioning the j and sigma p being the sigma square being the and the variance of that decisions. Now, remember this standard deviations again I am mentioning actually they are sigma r of p. So, the you are taking the standard deviation of the return of the distribution returns are drawn from based on that you find out the mean value based on that you find out the, the standard deviation. So, once you put plug in those values, so you have um, the value from the project given as uh, corresponding. So, I have taken a different sets of values rather than r l being 7 I have taken 8 the returns for project A, B, C, D or the decisions A, B, C, D are given by 10, 12, 14 and 16 and the standard deviations corresponding to A, B, C, D are given by 12, 17, 17 and 11, uh, oh, one minute it should be 110, sorry, sorry my mistake, my mistake it should be 110. So, based on that the small z values for the first case project is given by 8 minus 10 by 12, for the second one is 8 minus 12 by 17, for the third case c is given by 8 minus 14 by 17 and the fourth case is given by 8 minus 16 by 110. So, once you find out small z the probabilities can be found out. So, small z's values are given as I am not repeat I am not saying the minus values because they are on the negative side. So, is my uh, 0 0.17, 0 0.24. 0.35 and 0 0.07. So, you want to minimize them. So, obviously, hence project C is chosen according to the principle the science because you want to basically minimize the probabilities. So, minus 3.4535 is as far as possible onto the left. So, obviously, the alpha value would be as low. So, if I draw the graph, this is the alpha value. I want to basically make it as low as possible. So, it will be on the left and based on that you can find out that how we will rank them. So, the ranking system being C is better than B is better than A is better than D. Now, I have been I did mention fleetingly the concepts of positive and, and negative distribution. They were basically based on the fact that whether you have skewed distribution onto the left or the right. I will just draw it in order to make you understand. So, for a positive distribution, these are the axes is consider. I will use different colors skewed on to the left, ok, my mistake, and skewed on to the right. You will have the distributions corresponding to the positive and negative. I will come to that later on in DADM 3, remember that, because in DADM 2, uh, it is more related to the trying to understand the concept of utility theory and how you can utilize it for non-parametric distribution. With this, I will end the 10th lecture which is the end of the second week and hopefully by 11th lecture which is the first uh, lecture for the third week, I will be able to wrap up utility and then start in the 12th lecture which is the second class in the third week about the actual concepts based on which we will be covering in this uh, DADM2 lecture series under NPTEL MOOC. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and have a nice day.